Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today is the first part of the first lecture and it is regarding the fundamentals of the managerial economics. By fundamentals mean, we means what are the basics and what are the different basics to boost which we are going to understand in order to understand the concept of the managerial economics. So, what do you mean by the managerial economics? As you can see, that this, this term is composed of two components. One is the managerial, another one is the economics. From the managerial, there is the concept of the manager and the economics is simply the economics. So, what do you mean by a manager? A manager is a person who is going to direct the resources. Why? In order to achieve a goal. And the goal must be a stated goal. It means it be a well-defined and well-established goal. So, it well-established goal but could be in the form of the maximization of the profit in the form of certain sales targets in the form of the certain revenue targets. So, how is going to achieve that those goals by directing different resources? Resources in the form of the labor, in the form of the technology, in the form of the production. So, manager is always going to go for a stated goal and for a technique or for a policy that how is going he or she is going to direct the resources which he or she has at his disposal what do you mean by the economics economics is the science of making the sea in the presence of the scarce resources it is actually the management of the resources and why do we manage to need to manage the resources is because of the fact we have got the scarce resources as the resource is always scarce in the form of the land labor and capital at the hand of the manager by combining these two we get the concept of the managerial economics so managerial economics is that it is those practices which is being practiced by the manager why in order to get two things number one to attainment of the objective and number two the organization of the management uh, the organization of the scarce resources by combining these two, there is a the concept of the managerial economics. So, it is a study of how to direct the scarce resources in a way that most efficiently and most effectively leads to achieve a managerial goal. Manager is going to achieve a stated goal with the help of the resources and how he is going to organize those resources in the form of the fact that is going to give you the maximum out of the Minimum. So by combining the manager and the economics, there is the concept of the managerial economics and how it means that how a manager is going to achieve his or his her goals in the form of the scarce resources and how he is going to organize those scarce resources. This represents the managerial economics. So a manager has to attain a well-defined goal. So how he or she is going to identify the goals? The goal may be an objective. So, sound decision making involves well-defined goals. Goals must be well-defined. Well-defined means the goals must be attainable, must be um, uh, in such a way that you should know in order to uh, make up a goal, you should know what are your limitations. For example, if a firm has the, the maximum production capacity of 100 units, if a manager is going to make up the objective that he or she is going to make up the 1000 units within uh, the specified resources, which he or she has, that is not a well-defined goal. A well-defined goal could be, uh, he could increase the level of the production from the 100 to the 125 or up to the 120 units, not directly from the 100 towards the 1000 units. So, a sound decision making means that you should have a well-defined goals. Well-defined goals means attainable and objective, attainable goals in such a way that could be attained within the boundaries of the resources which you do have. It is always leads towards the making the right decisions. In striking to achieve a goal, we often face constraints. Constraints are always termed as the limitations. Limitations are there because of the fact that in terms of the economics, we organize the resources. Why we need to organize the resources is the fact we have got the limited resources. Now, limitation of the resources is a constraint. Same is the case. Constraints are always there. The constraints are an artifact of the scarcity. Of scarcity now this scarcity means it could be in the form of the any form it could be in the form of the labor it could be in the form of the capital it could be in the form of the land for example uh, when this uh, uh, course of uh, managerial economics was offered to me and when i applied this course for you at that time i didn't have any idea that instead of delivering the lecture in the classroom i have to deliver it online so this is termed as a constraint and the constraint is an artifact of the scarcity because of the fact the uncertainties was there and in this time period 
of pandemic i am not in a position to deliver the classroom deliver the lecture in the classroom and you are not in a position to come towards the university that's why i am delivering this course in the form of a, a virtual classroom or the online lecture so uh, till now we have understood three concepts one is the manager who is a manager a manager is a person who is going to achieve some goals and in order to achieve the goals he has to use the resources the second concept was the economics economics means the organization of resources in such a way that we can get the maximum out of the minimum and why do we need to organize the resources is because of the fact we have got the limited resources the third thing is the the goals which are being defined by the manager must be well defined it means be it means that the goals must be attainable within the resources which the manager has and in order to achieve the goals we are facing some constraints constraint must can be in the form of the time in the form of the money in the form of the land in the form of the labor anything like that and why do a manager needs to understand to cope with all those concepts is that one of the goal which a manager always have is the maximization of the profit or you can say is the optimization of the profit profit is actually the difference between the total revenue and the total cost total revenue means what are the sale earnings of the firm and the total cost means what are the cost of the production and the different cost which the firm is incurring while producing those goods if the difference between these two is positive it means that they have got a positive profit and if the difference between these two is negative it means the firm has having the losses now in terms of the profit there are two types of profit which we have one is the economic profit another one is the accounting profit now in order to understand these two concepts i will first give you the elaboration of two types of cost which is going to differentiate between these two the two types of cost one is the explicit cost another one is the implicit cost if explicit cost is that cost that requires a direct outlay of the money it means you have transferred that money out of your account for certain reasons in order to pay the salaries of the workers in order to pay your electricity bill in order to purchase in order to pay for the purchase of machinery that represents the explicit cost it starts with the ex it means it is the exit from your account the other cost is the implicit cost that do not require the direct outlay of the money it means you have acquired something but you haven't paid for that good for example you are a manager and you are also looking for the accounts of the company too instead of hiring an ad additional uh, accountant the company has asked you to for to look for the accounts and the company has given you the salary of the manager not of the accountant it means that the work of the accountant has been done but the salary of the accountant has not been transferred to you the difference between different these two explicit or implicit mein basically farak kya hota hai explicit mein aapka kaam ho jata hai aur aap uske liye paise bhi dete hain implicit cost ke andar kya hota hai aapka kaam ho gaya lekin uske liye paise aapne nahi diye so jab baat aati hai when there is a concept of the accounting profit v minus only the explicit cost of total total revenue we do not consider the implicit cost over there and while discussing the economic profit we deduct both the explicit and the implicit cost out of the economic profit it means economic profit is always less than that of the accounting profit because of the difference of the implicit cost in the accounting profit we do not deduct implicit cost out of the total revenue but in case of the economic profit we deduct implicit cost out of the total revenue so this is the difference between the accounting and the economic profit so in case of the managerial economics we always consider the and all the other economists always consider the economic profit not the accounting profit so opportunity cost what do you mean by the opportunity cost in case of the accounting cost the explicit cost of the revenue needed to produce the goods and services for example the uh, salaries of the wa uh, wages and salaries of the workers uh, the prices of the raw material the cost of the raw material transportation cost and it is always reported on the firm's income statement it means it has been directly transferred from your account it has been directly moved out of your account that's why it was reported on the firm's income statement now opportunity cost means the cost of the explicit and implicit resources that are foregone by making a decision made 
so in case comes of the accounting profit we always deduct only the accounting cost and accounting cost are composed of only the explicit cost now in terms of the opportunity cost the opportunity cost is a combination of both the explicit and the implicit cost and in terms of the economic profit we are going to deduct both the explicit and the implicit cost out of the total revenue for that reason the economic profit are always less than that of the accounting profit now what is the importance of the profits profits are always very important for a manager because it is his objective but profits are always very important for the other people who the other stakeholders who are those because of the fact because of the one property of the profits that the profit acts as a signal it gives an indication towards the other resource holders if an industry is making some profit then it is going to give some indication to the other resource holders that you should invest within this industry as this industry is yielding the maximum level of the profit as you can say that the telecommunication industry or the industry the number of the uh, firms entering into that industry is increasing why it's increasing because of the fact because of the level of the profit that these in the firms are yielding this level of the profit is indicating other firms to enter into this market at this industry is going to yield the maximum level of the profit the profit signal to the resource holders where the resources are mostly highly valued by the society it means the consumers are very much attractable towards that the products which are being offered by the industry resources for uh, will flow from the industries that are most highly valued by the society for that reason the profit is not only uh, maximization of the profit is not only the objective of the manager but the profit of a firm is going to give an indication to the other resource holders that they should invest within this industry now if uh, the what uh, the main objective of the firm, of the manager was to have a sustainable level of the profit sustainable means that he wants to have the level of the profit when uh, within a, a comfortable range it doesn't mean that the firm is going to have a profit in one month and in the next case he the firm is going to face the losses and then the next month the firm is going to face the profit that is not going to termed as a sustainable profit sustainable profit if you are going to pro earn the profit by 10% one month in the next month per month it could be 8% in the next month it could be the 12% that range is a comfortable range and that is termed as the sustainable industry profit so one of the prime objectives which a manager always have is to maintain a sustainable industry profit so instead of the decisions which are being made by the manager there's a certain other forces which are going to affect the level of the profit of a firm and what are those uh, uh, forces these are the entry what will the impact on your uh, industry's profit when a new firm is going to enter the market if the buyers are going to change if the buyers are going to make some discrimination if the buyers are going to be going to make some decisions then what are going to what will be the impact on your industry what will be the impact of the input supply decisions or your industry if a new firm has entered into the industry it means the number of the firms has increased within the industry leading towards the industry rivalry what will be the impact on your profit and the new firm has entered into the industry and what type of the good that has produced whether that was the substitute or the nature of the good was complementary to that of your product and what will be the impact on your industry profit so in 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 addition to the manager there's lots of external forces which are also affecting on the level of the profit which you are earning and in the among those forces there are five major forces uh, named as the entry part of the input suppliers part of buyers industry rivalry substitutes and complements we will discuss in the next part of this lecture